It's fine. Um, I'm not here. <laughs> yeah, so I was an alum. I was an ESRM, Environmental Science Resource Management, graduate of 2017, so two years, which is crazy that it's been that long. Uh -huh. um, let's see, what else? I started my freshman year, did the five year plan, worked every year, sometimes two jobs, first gen, um, college student, low income, all that fun stuff. I'm from the high desert back in uh, San Bernardino County area, so I came out here Victorville. for- Victorville. Uh, yeah, Apple Valley, it's very, yeah. Luckily, I didn't have to live in Victor Victorville. <laughs> it's kind of the worst one. Um, <laughs> but, so I moved out to amazing Camarillo for school. Um, I've been pretty involved basically the whole time. Was in housing, was an RA in housing. So I've pretty much worked on every in every department on campus except for um, extended ed. <laughs> so I was BFA because I worked for facilities for two and a half years, um, student affairs, and now academic affairs. So I I've been around the block a couple times with campus life. But um, I came out here for a field school. We we run three field schools out here over the summer. Um, we are hoping to do that again. Hopefully next year will be the first one with our new director, Russ Bradley. Not to be confused with Russell. <laughs> Russell too. <laughs> Russell. Um, and so, so with the field course, we were out here for three weeks. It was pretty intensive. It was a seven unit, two, um, two classes for three weeks. And then we had a little bit before and a little bit after on campus. And with that, I kind of found my calling as an island lover and um, really passionate about field work and being outside. And these places are something special to see for everyone. So I kind of found that out here. And I found my um, senior research project as well with help from our late director, Cause, and um, started that. Did a two year iteration of um, a really a super cool project that hopefully we're going to be doing again in the future. Lagoon monitoring. Yeah, I did some water quality monitoring, some um, spatial extent mapping, that sort of thing. Mostly just did a lot of hiking alone. <laughs> some time alone to myself um, to think about lots of cool things and realize that this is where I wanted to be. This is the best place and I felt like when I graduated I could give, I wasn't done with it and I wasn't done giving back to the campus and especially to the island. Um, so luckily and sadly at the same time, that's when Dr. Kozhana was um, getting sicker and they needed someone to help out Robin Shea, who was running the place by herself at the time. This place? This place. Yeah, she was the assistant director and then she had to step in. Yeah, yeah when he got sick, which was during my senior Cos year. passed away from cancer. Oh. He was our founding director here. Yeah, he was 36, so super yeah. healthy guy. Oh, yeah, it's a... Yeah. Amazing, amazing, story. amazing person. Yeah. yeah. When we did the interview process by uh, Chief of uh, Natural Resources, we had the director from the Antarctica Field Station apply for the job, and caused, and one other person from a big field station. And when they came out here, um, they knew she knew right away that cause not only was smart, <laughs> yeah. but he also liked the interdisciplinary approach to things, and he could fix things. The others were, where do you give me the key and I'll open the station. Mm -hmm. And so right then and there, we said cause was the right person. And, and that it's really important to stress that interdisciplinary approach. Yeah. Because it isn't just about come out here and Science. do a lagoon thing. Yeah. There, again, there's that cultural piece. Yeah. And there's there's actually, how do you live on an island? Mm -hmm. Do you live out here? Uh, so we live out here for a weekend, or right now I'll be out here for a week, but not full time. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and the interdisciplinary thing is something that's really important to my heart. I have a performing arts minor, <laughs> and um, so we're not just a research station for science. The, the arts, the cultural stuff is just as important, if not sometimes more important because they're the ones that can communicate it, right? We need those artists and those communication people to help us scientists do a better job of displaying what we want heard and um, mm. what is it. So that was something that, as a staff member, I get to see even more because I get to come out with all of the different groups, you know, um, middle school, high school, the different inter uh, disciplines at CI, and I see that it's just important, as important for them to, to see this place. And 
and they maybe even get a little bit more out of it because it's out of their norm. It's not something that they would necessarily do every day or um, back home on the mainland. So for them, you get to see the island through their eyes and that's probably the best part about my job <laughs> is to see that different every day because you know when you live out here and you're out here for a while scrubbing floors and fixing toilets it gets a little mundane and dirty but when you see someone walk through Cherry Canyon or go to Lobo for the first time and you see their eyes light up it's that's what makes it all worth it. And when you run out of electricity yeah. you're out of electricity. Yeah. If you run out of water you run out of water because you have to learn to conserve out mm -hmm. here. So they get another message yeah. about living out here. Yeah, they definitely, um, many times, we do a reflection at the end with the whole group. We have them sit down and kind of say what their favorite part was, um, which is my favorite part as well, most of the time. But a lot of them say, yeah, I didn't think I could hike that far. I didn't think I could go without a shower for three days or, you know, whatever it may be. They, they learn about themselves outside of the classroom and inside. And I think that is um, something really cool because they can take that back to the classroom and appreciate their professors or appreciate the kids that sat in the back room of the class that they never saw or whatever it may be. So, right. cool. Do you want to talk about this space here? Yeah, do so this? Um, this is you the... You can sit down if you like. Yeah, go yeah, ahead okay. and sit down. Sure. Um, this is the bunk house. It was used by the Vaqueros, the Cowboys, before. Um, it was built in right around 1970, 71, after the first one burnt down. We took it over. Maybe Russell has already talked about that. We took uh, it over. Uh, um, what, 2013? We haven't talked about this building yet. Oh, okay. Right. Cool. So the university um, was able to come in and take it over with Russell's help and Dan and Cause and Sean and Dawn and all those people um, that were really integral in making this place happen. And so we came in. Uh, CI Facility Services did most of the, the work inside the building with a lot of help from National Park Service on the outside and the roof and those sort of things. Um, and I was just a little freshman, so I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so this is the kitchen. This is used for a kitchen, um, game table, schoolhouse, whatever it may be. This is the main area of our research station, other than the hiking and the islands. Um, so it gets a lot of use. And that is something to realize as well, like this whole week, we'll be doing some facilities maintenance projects. Um, I'm scraping the floors because some people don't know how to walk, to mop, and you know, that's another learning thing is how to clean, right? <laughs> they've never, maybe they've never been in a situation where they had to clean themselves or clean up after themselves or dirty of themselves. So that's something that is really cool to see. And um, I'm gonna send my kids here. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting, you know, everyone it was raised differently and that's awesome. Um, and then they get to be in here with 30 people or however many people. We hold uh, 36 people, so we have 22 beds inside the building and then we can walk around the corner to some temp temporary tent cabins that we built that um, opened up our capacity. But yeah, so this is the kitchen and this is the space. Um, and everybody space. uses it. Everybody. Yeah, everybody. So professors, when they come out here, they stay here in this building. We're lucky enough to have a staff building for us, for the three staff and our student assistant. Um, but everyone stays in here. So that's another really cool part of it is that you don't get that hierarchy anymore. It's you and your students and maybe another PhD researcher staying, so another class if it's um, – two small groups, that is a really cool dynamic, different people from different universities. All that happens here. Um, we have presentations impromptu. Um, just this weekend, one of our faculty that come out a lot, Jeff Dilley in biology, does intertidal research. He was talking to someone on the boat who is from Berkeley, looking at um, drought tolerance in oak trees. So he came over and talked to them one night so, and we have people from NPS, National Park, come down and present, have dinner with us. Students cook, clean, and then, you know, they present. So, yeah. So, so you know, that was, yeah, that was actually intentional in the design, was the whole idea, it was to keep this, um, this cowboy atmosphere where you would sit down, and you didn't know who you were going to sit next to. Yeah. And the whole idea is you may learn something new by who you're having 
dinner with. And, uh, and researchers are encouraged to come down to the university and discuss what they're talking about. So every time I would come here, like if it was a day like you know, today, if there were students here, um, Erica would make sure you were introduced to the students because maybe one of them wanted to be the treasurer. You never know. <laughs> but I came out here once with uh, the director of the National Park Service. We went on a little hike, and there was a local uh, student from uh, Oxnard. She went to Channel Islands High School. She's and on the way out today. What's that? Is she really? Yeah. Oh, and it was great because the university did this bring your sibling to the island day. So she had her sister, they're from Oxnard, and her sister had never been out here. So they, she was down there doing her capstone. And so the director and I walked down there, and uh, I said, Hey, John, you want to come meet one of these CSU CI students? So they sat on the beach for 30 minutes, her discussing her capstone project with the director of the National Park Service. Not the regional director, the director director. And that's what I wanted. I wanted these kids to have an opportunity to meet other people and not think that, oh, you know, I'll never get to meet that person or I'll never interact with that person. And we see kids changing majors. Uh, and just because of this opportunity, we tried to make that you would disarm everybody here and everybody's on equal ground. So, you know, it's worked out great. Um, and what Aspen sort of went over is that when, this is I think important for the state, is the way the Park Service, when we worked out this agreement, is this building was in bad shape. This is where the Cowboys stayed. And so they didn't have to keep it always up to stuff. But over time, it, it had some problems with mice, and uh, a lot of problems with mice. <laughs> and the roof was collapsing, and the rooms were in bad shape. And so uh, the Park Service couldn't do anything about it because we didn't have any funding to do that. So the university did all the major rehab. The Park Service was responsible for the envelope, but all the interior. So the, the university invested in it. And so what the park did the, as, a, as a payback to that is we can't just give things away. So what you do is you set up this agreement with the university so that what would be a uh, site fee or utility fees, they're kept, but they're deducted from the original investment. So the university is gonna go on for probably 10 years, 10, 15 years, I don't know how it's playing out now, without having to ever put any money back into the federal government as far as money, money, because they did it in infrastructure support. And that really works out beautiful of how the university did that and open that this place would still be closed down if the university didn't step in and say we're going to make it work because this would have been a lower priority that building you saw earlier was a high priority because it's a historic this is not a historic house mm -hmm. so this would have been a lower priority but that partnership with the university and then the structure we put in place i, I think was to everybody's benefit otherwise this building would be falling apart and it's one of the first ones you see when you come on the boat and so that something you know people come by campers and stuff they stop by and check it out um, because it's is it open for campers no it's no. not that's why we have the locks on the doors <laughs> no I'm just saying like this island's open oh the island is yeah, island is yeah 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 the public national right. park oh. the campground is um, right where you guys landed basically right in that canyon right there oh. um, what there's like 45 people 75 people can say there yeah so this this site here there's actually two parcels there's this site here and then also where the residence is for the uh, the director of the field station. The meadow, kind of, under right. trees. We'll walk by it on the way out. Okay. Is that they are two land assignments that are under a, a, a special use agreement with the university. And so they are theirs to manage, which means unless you're here for a university function, they can lock the doors. You know, part of the safety, too, for the kids. But if they want to invite in the public, that's really up to them. But it's been assigned to them. And we purposely didn't do it with a lot of the historic buildings because that way then the public couldn't complain that we can't see the historic building. Well, this one is not historic. 